All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. I've been instructed to read the injury report from today. And the following players are out for the game. Those would be DJ Jones, Calvin Anderson, and Kendall Hinton. And the following players are questionable for this game. Those players are Eric Saubert, Damari Mathis, Jonathan Kongbo, Eric Tomlinson, and Billy Turner. And with that, I'll turn it over to your questions. Mathis, is he progressing in the third level? Like the yeah, as you probably understand, I can't comment on that, but he's going through the concussion protocol as prescribed by the doctors, and we'll uh, see how that goes. Uh, we'll see. We'll see on Sunday when uh, we go right out there, and whoever takes the field will be our returner of choice. And I prefer not to give that information to the other team in advance. I, I'm sure you understand. They talked a lot this week about the importance of, of winning this game. What could this win maybe do for the momentum, even going into an offseason? Obviously, there's still a lot of question marks. Yeah, I've, I've talked extensively about that. I'm, I'm not sure that I have anything more to offer, real frankly. I mean, it's, it's an NFL football game. I talked with James Lawson yesterday in the production meeting, and he asked me the similar question. He says, do they realize how precious these games are? And James, I hope they do. Sometimes when you return to something after being away, we say things like, oh, I didn't realize how much I missed X, Y, and Z. So for you, coming back to the football environment this year, what things did you experience that made you realize you didn't realize that you missed so much in the last few years? That's a really thoughtful question. I, I think, if I can rephrase it just slightly, I think the thing that I thought I missed and that has been reconfirmed that I missed was my engagement with the players. I love these guys, man. And, and a lot of these guys didn't know me coming in, and some embraced me early, some embraced me later on, and some perhaps haven't embraced me. But I, I really appreciate these relationships that I build up over the years. And it's not just about building a relationship. If you just do that as a coach, then you're not doing your job. It's about trying to help them become better players and better men. So when they venture out in the world, they're prepared for that. And I have deep-seated relationships in my life that they've, these players have raised me up, and I'm a better man for it. So that's what I missed. And uh, I, I'm pretty confident I've made some relationships here that will be life-lasting. You were close with John Harbaugh. Yes, that's correct. There's talk about Jim Harbaugh being a candidate here. I was wondering your thoughts on that football family that is the Harbaugh's and, and maybe Jim in particular, what you know about him. Yeah, to the football family, the Harbaugh family, is a, they've had a huge impact in my life. I mean, John is my best friend and has been for 30-some years. So my, he was there in 1993 when my daughter Megan was born and uh, and throughout my life, he's been a very strong influence and a strong um, friend is in the deepest sense. And so, if, you know, Jack Harbaugh is to my children, Jack Harbaugh is Grandpa Jack. So we are, you know, the, the term family gets bounced around a lot, but we are tr truly family. And in fact, we have a, a little uh, word that we use where the Harburgs or the Rossbaughs, that's how close we are. It depends on who's saying it. And with regard to Jim Harbaugh, I've known Jim since he's a player through my relationship with John. And I've, I've watched him as a player, and I admired him so greatly as a player, so competitive. And just the, the fire that he has, I, I think, comes naturally for him because he's been involved in football his whole life. And he, his father has the same fire in his belly as does his brother John. So that's, uh, that has followed through with his coaching career, you see. Jim's success he has at every level. He's, you know, he started as a, as a, a lower level assistant in Oakland and just was a grinder. And that's, he, he paid, in my view, he humbled himself. He, you go from a star NFL quarterback, captain comeback, and, and all the things that that involves. And then you go sit in an office in the corner and, and grind on football until wee hours of the night and you're paid just a, a low level dollar. And so he, he, a lot of coaches that come into this league that are former players don't do that. They just jump up into a position coach role or a, even a coordinator's role. Jim did everything. He, he, was in the, he was in the very basics of coaching. And, and then he jumps in and becomes a college coach at a small school. And next thing you know, he's in a Pac-10. And next thing you know, he's with the 49ers. He's in the Super Bowl and, and all that. And it's, he's, he's earned all that. He's a, he's a fabulous football coach and, a, and I would say a, a great personality as well. He's, He's a brilliant man. He's sometimes 
when he's dealing with y'all, he's, uh, he's a very interesting man as well. And, I, and I, I laugh, real frankly. I appreciate the way he approaches his task. And, and if this coaching thing doesn't work out for him, then he could always be a lawnsman. I don't know if you've seen that, but I, I belly laughed when I saw that. It was so it's, I have a great appreciation for Jim and all his talents, and I love that whole family. So a couple of things. Have, have you learned anything about football in these past two weeks you didn't know about football with this particular position? And uh, has anything changed <clears throat> for you in terms of a desire perhaps to still be a coach on the field? I've learned a lot of football, yeah, I have. And I, when you're away for a little bit, perhaps you're not sure how the, the football culture has changed. Uh, so what I've learned about football is the, the basics of football have not changed. There's, it's still fundamentals. It's still blocking and tackling and catching and running, and that, that part has not changed, although you know, the rules have changed and so forth. But it's, uh, it's still a great, great game, and I love this game. Um, with regard to your second question about my role in this, I, as I've expressed to you all, I have, I have other business interests with Mr. Jonathan Rotella that we're working on, and that's a deep-seated desire for me to help our players, both active and retired, you know, there's too many guys that go by the wayside after they retire, and I, I, I have a strong desire to do that. And we're, we're, it's taking shape. You know, it's in its initial stages. And I, through Next Gen Hyperbaric, and we have a partnership with the APN, All Points North Lodge, and we're the foundation at the NFLPA and the and Sean Sensaveri, the chief medical officer of the NFLP and NFLPA and the general counsel. We're we're making inroads, so when we get to this point where we have a player that's retired and he's having problems, we both have the resources and the the desire to help these men. So that's, like I said previously, you know, next week, Monday will be Monday. But I'm I'm really focused on this game for these players. As I've said previously, we're we're seeking to to have joy at the end of the day with our our teammates, our friends, our family, and our fans. That's that's my goal. Monday will be Monday. Thank you all. Oh, am I not done? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. No, 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 please. I, I didn't. Yes, sir. That was my son, Jared. Oh, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, he's, he's going through a tough spot in his career, too. He's, I, I go down in the training room and talk to these guys, and I look in their eyes, and I see my son. You know, he, he had an unfortunate injury. He's a professional hockey player, and he dislocated his shoulder, and, and he had uh, surgery up at Stebna Clinic in Vail, and that's why he was in the area. And he's on the mend, and I, I look forward to watching him play again soon. Pardon? Oh, yeah, I, I ignored your question. I'm sorry I was so focused on uh, the, the moment. The moment, uh, I think I, just tried, I tried to describe it last time, and when I bounced out of that uh, tunnel and went out there in the stadium and I was, had my son with me, it's, it's pretty cool. I, one thing I learned from John Harbaugh, he's, he's brilliant at this, is he sh and Tom Izzo, too, is just incredibly brilliant at this and I'm, I'm a rookie but he shares those moments with others you know it's, it's one thing to walk out the tunnel yourself and behold the, the whole scene and oh wow this is really cool I, I, you know it's about me but being able to share that with my son was really meaningful to me so yeah we've talked about it we tried to make sense of it a little bit but uh, yeah I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that with my son again this week at the home game thank you that, thank you for that question what, what level pro hockey uh, he's he's on an NHL contract with the Dallas Stars. He's playing with the AHL Texas Stars when he got injured. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you, everyone. Hey, one one last thing, and I know this we'll probably see each other at the stadium on Sunday, but um, things kind of happen fast on Sundays, and I I think I talk a lot lot faster on Sundays than I do during the week. Perhaps you've noticed that, but it, you guys have been great. I mean, I I don't know y'all, and, and perhaps we'll get to know each other someday but if, if you see me please grab me but I I really appreciate your patience with me and I'm new at this and I uh, I, I confess that I haven't read or seen much of that you do but I, you've been very cordial to me and, and welcoming and, and your th your questions are really you're, you're spending time thinking up good questions and I've I'm doing my best to answer them but I want to salute you thank you for all that you've done for me uh, let's go Broncos Thanks.